Um, hey, everybody. We're back. Stop laughing. Um, we're back. Um, here to talk. We're, we're Martheus and Janet Wade, again, talking about uh, manga-inspired artwork and things like that. But we're talking about our comic book, Shinobi Ninja Princess. Um, it's, it's a manga-inspired manga uh, book uh, that we did. We started, when did we start it? A million years ago. It wasn't a million years ago, but it was a while ago. It was about five years ago. No, um, ten years ago. Ten years ago? Because you were telling me your ideas for the stories when oh, I was little. pregnant. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, it would, yeah, wow, it was ten years ago. So, but the book wasn't published right off, so it was it was about, i say about seven years ago. So, we've been actually working on a book, and the book's been out for so about seven years, so. Um, and uh, our newest book is the hardcover compilation of um, all the stuff that we have up until now. So. Um, Shinobi Ninja Princess, the book is about 14-year-old uh, Shiandria Toshigawa who is uh, the uh, chosen one of her uh, ninja clan, which is called the Toshigawa Ninja Clan. She's, she has special powers that um, she's trying to understand and grow into um, and uh, but sh what she wants to do is she really wants to hang out with her friends and be a normal teenage girl um, and uh, but her her elders and the people that run the clan uh, pretty much want her to stick to her training and they try to protect her um, uh, much to her chagrin she doesn't want that to happen um, and on, on the flip side, there are Oni, which are Japanese uh, monsters that are after her for her power. Um, and they are led by a, a rival ninja clan called the Azumi Ninja Clan. So um, she, between her having to be able to deal with her elders, trying to live her own life, trying to understand her own powers and responsibilities, but also be able to fight against the Oni um, that's trying to get her. Uh, it's a pretty exciting um, book, you know, keep you on your toes. Uh, well, I am the co-writer and uh, it used to be co-inker, um, but now he does, instead do of pen things. and paper, he does everything on his iPad, uh, so everything's digital, but I do the colors. Um, I do cover art, I do pinup art, I do sketch cards, I do um, a lot of the uh, comic first, book text editing. Yeah, first editing, yeah. Yeah, things like that. So, so I, I help out with the artwork in the creation. And I also try to keep the storyline in check because... Um, uh, Continuity. We, yeah, we we need we need consistency. So like, if if someone is like wearing pants in one panel and the next panel they're suddenly not, right. I have to let him know put some pants on that person because they had pants in the previous panel, please. That, or that looks weird. Or like um like uh like if uh one person this is a big one one person ends up being in one scene and then the background in the scene completely in another part of of the story then those two people can't be there so somebody's got to be edited out so um things like that happen more often than not um uh it actually happened in in the uh evolution book as well oh. we had to edit out character <laughs> because they were they were in two different places at two different times, and we were just kind of like, wait a minute, that it, can't happen. I, I know it's so, a work around around that. You just say someone's an imposter. Somebody is an imposter. No, mm -hmm. no, but, 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 so it happens. It happens more often than not. So um, to be able to watch for that, have multiple eyes, see things before it goes to print, you know, that's one of the things. The way we work is that I do the script, I write the script out before I start drawing it, and then I give the script without any artwork or anything to Janet to read and then she makes her edits and stuff and then I get the script back and then I do my edits based off of hers and and then my second read and then what I do is I formulate that into what it is and I start drawing artwork from it and then once I get all the artwork finished I'll take that artwork and then give it to 
um, take the artwork and the script and give it to Janet and then she starts marrying those together or sometimes I might do it I might start it out start it out and then give those pages that I started on to Janet and then she can put them together and stuff like that she makes her edits then then I get it back I read it again then I make my edits again and then I send my edits um, my corrections to uh, our friend Kevin who is the overall editor so he looks at everything at that point and he tries to he looks at it with fresh eyes he looks at it with fresh eyes and then um once he makes his edits i do um i do the corrections based off of that and then i send it out to my test audience so i'll have like say um mr liddell beeman read it i'll have my friend alexis and china she reads it and then i have um we you have know, our own son uh, read it. Yeah, uh, uh, have my son read it to make sure it's just fun. You know, I'm a guinea pig. He's a yes. guinea pig, and then, um, and then um, after that, I take that back, and then, based off of what they say, it either goes to print or we do another round of edits. So, um, it, it, it's a rigorous process, really, kind of before it gets to, to to point to the point to where you guys read it because we've seen it like like multiple times by the time it gets to print so yeah. but it, it's fun it's fun you know it's a it's a fun fun take hmm. um I'll, okay so I will say all right I will say that I actually put I put I made a character based on my son and he's in the book and I actually ended up liking writing that character um a lot more than i thought i would um no offense but <laughs> and he, was, he, he was just kind of a background yeah character. he was a background character but that character was just fun to be able to to play off of and play he, jokes he's with. one of the group he's one of the teenagers so you know how teenagers yeah. are they they just they just vibe off each other and it's like a never ending ball of energy right and, and really, really, I think I, I like I like the dynamic between all of um, the main group of kids. You've got Shiandria who is here, then you got her best friend Megumi, and you have Ken, which is the character that um, Anakin is based off of. Um, um, and then um, you have Hamaske, um, who is like he was the antagonist, but he's coming around to being like the you know the 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 green ranger or the something. green ranger the the, <laughs> the the one who has kind of like the, the one uh, who the was attitude. bad he was bad but he's coming to the fold and then you have um the masters which are like ken kim and i who are you know they're the they're older older, older ki kids teenagers, teenagers yeah. that you know have a relationship mm -hmm. but being able to talk to intura as well you know who is the oldest out of all of them but being able to their dynamic together and their friendship together is really cool to be able to to um to uh, um to write and to draw um and this is where like i like to be able to bring in a, a weird diversity and the reason why i liked his character uh being a part of that group um is because when i added him to that group and i started being able to write his experiences because really that character i don't know if you guys know a lot about history um and uh the history of japan but there was a um a African American, well not African American, an African slave who actually ended up becoming a samurai, and um, he served all the way. He served uh, Nobunaga uh, Oda all the way up until Nobunaga died, and then after that, um, he was about to. Uh, uh, his I think his history is lost right after that. Like after that, he he wanders off into Japan and. And that's pretty much it, you know. Um, the the cool thing about it is, is that, um, and this kind of relates to current events. Chadwick Boseman was actually playing that character before he died. Did you say the um, name Yosuke? Yosuke. He was his his name was Yosuke. Um, and, Which is a uh, Japanese name. It's a Japanese name. I don't know if they ever recorded his actual his actual name. name. Um, but it's 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 true. It's a history. You can go look that up. Um, and in our story, in our story, um, Anakin's character Ken is actually a descendant of Yosuke. So um, 
being but he lives in America he actually is from America and he comes back kind of as his summer vacation to come back and train it's as a, a ninja Cause as a summer camp so because he's he's part of the clan and then he goes back to America he goes to school and stuff so to be able to transport somebody from America into Japan with those American um, sensibilities and 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 things like that into Japan into this very traditional um, um, training method martial arts training method to see how that mixes up the group and things like that that's really cool to be able to write so um i and i wasn't expecting that i, I just wasn't until i brought it into the group um what about you favorite characters um well i think i think uh two of my favorite characters and this is because how they play off of each other uh is the the older character Tura mm -hmm. and uh, the the dude who likes her Cyan, oh, just yeah. because it's like <coughs> she he he's younger than her like by a few years, but his confidence just kind of like he's he's a uh, very confident guy. His con <laughs> his confidence uh, like doesn't stop him from realizing that he's like a few years younger right. and maybe he should like try to uh talk to a girl his age <laughs> so so he's like he's like always like cracking jokes and being like kind of slick and flirty with her and she's like oh my god you're so annoying like a little kid but she likes but him. she likes him yeah she likes him he's so. he's growing on her yeah and actually um so so our shinobi ninja princess series is about uh all all these characters as uh kids and teenagers, we actually had, uh, were working on uh, a book previously where all of them were grown up and when they were grown up is when uh, Tora and Cyan actually have a relationship together. So, mm -hmm. so yay, spoiler alert, he, he won her over. Thanks. But if you read our books, you get to see how he... <laughs> the progression he of that relationship. Tries. How he tries and, and tries fails. tries and tries <laughs> and tries. <laughs> So. And try. You get shut down a lot. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> never, never give up. <laughs> never surrender. <laughs>Yeah, definitely. And I, I don't think it's like just quite unique to myself. I know there's like a, a lot of uh, uh, kids who are going through this. Uh, these certain situations now and hopefully hopefully you guys grow out of like your self-doubt and uh, worry about like what other people think of you and stuff like that so obviously I'm an old lady now but when I was growing up I it really mattered what people thought about me so I had to have my hair a certain way I had to like put makeup on. I don't think y'all know this, but I don't have any makeup on. One, because I have like a, an allergy, a skin allergy. And two, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just don't. Um, but when I was younger, I tried. And I would try to do my hair, my makeup, because the girls at the school, they did that kind of stuff. And, and it was like, I would not want to present myself to the public unless I was a certain way. So it also like um, worried me like I guess if people like saw me doing certain things or if they how they thought of me if if they knew that I liked certain things um, so I guess a lot of the stuff that uh, uh, young Shandria goes through is like a lot of self-doubt and things like that because um, one of the main themes in the book is that she has this power within her but she's so afraid to use it because she doesn't know what it can do she doesn't know if she can control it and she doesn't know how it makes other people look at her so she's really worried about that um, and so I, I think a lot of young people deal with that the
the most is that they worry so much about other people and what they think when most of these people are probably not even thinking about you. <laughs> so. And if they are thinking about you, they're thinking about ways to undermine what you got, you know. Or how to be like you. You or don't, you don't know like you, there you might know? be someone who's looking at you and they are admiring you silently and from afar and wondering, gosh, you're so cool. How could I be like you? And so it's like a, this weird circle of stress, Yeah. unnecessary stress. When you guys get older, like old people like us, you're not gonna care. Like you, I'm not old. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It changes a lot, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a big response. There's there's more of a responsibility. Um, at first, when I was doing like the Jetta books, Jetta Tales of Toshiyawa books, I mean, there was no real responsibility. I mean, it was just, I have a story. I want to be able to put the story out. I'm just, I don't care. I really didn't think, I don't want to say I didn't care, but I didn't think about what that story I didn't live outside of myself, really, so I didn't think about what that story was actually saying or what You're, it was actually... Um, I know he asked you the question. I'm going to butt in. Yeah, why are you going to butt in my question? Because that's not 100% true. When you used to What's write you? Jetta, you were at a different place. You, you were. You were at a different place. I was so at a different you place. Had you had a lot of stuff you were trying to work out through your stories. I was I was in a different place. I was in a different I was in a different place. But I will say I will say though too. But it was like I didn't really think about what that place. I thought about it in. A, I say this in a way that's not like selfish. I, I try not to say this selfishly, but I thought of it. I thought of it in a selfish way, like in a, in a way where. Like this is my story, um, and I'm only going to tell it in with me in mind. I'm not really thinking about how that affects anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Um, and now with so much, so much involved in being able to kind of like get outside of that story and and and, and know that you know there's not that there's just a bigger world, but there's a world that you know is look going to be looking at my story. And looking at me in a in a bigger light than that, it changed it a lot. Um, it, it, it it really tell you the truth. It changed it because you know Anakin has brought so much joy to my life that wasn't there before. I'm not saying that that we didn't. <laughs> I'm not saying that we didn't it have added joy. joy. It's added joy and it's added responsibility. It's completely different. Like it's something that you can't explain unless you have kids or you know you, you're, you're able to be able to um, take care of kids as your own. You know what I mean? But it's just a certain amount of pride that you actually put into that. And to be able to, um, it, it, it's, it's infectious. It, it affects everything that you do creatively. Um, sometimes it can affect it in a negative way, but you know, more often than not, it can it affects it in a positive way, and it changed my story for the positive. I mean, positive. I mean, if you can just put the two stories together, you can see that one is a little bit more uplifting, even though it has dark corners. It has a little bit more uplifting. The other one was like really, really dark. You know, it's it's the basic premise of it was dark, um, and um, so it's changed it. It's changed it a whole lot. Um, I don't think that um, back then I could have written this story even though I had like the concepts for this story back then I couldn't have I couldn't have written this story back then you know I was too much you were in a different place was too much in a, yeah, in a different place then. So. that's that's the um that's, that's the big takeaway from it well I was gonna say that's uh the sign of uh, any artist, anyways, like Growth. of anybody, really, because uh, you're you're not going to be in the same place that you were ten years ago. And if you are, boy. hopefully, hopefully you will be better. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll you, be in a better spot. Gotta be better. You know? um, a different headspace.
and and you want to be able to take that um, and you know once you once you figure that out for yourself you want to be able to you know give that to other people you know and that kind of is a good segue you know because what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to take that and and take this feeling this creativity this voice that we've got and be able to give it to other people you know and it started with the comic studio and then us you know where we were trying to be able to to um teach other kids to be able to do like graphic design and comics and um, illustration and books and storytelling and writing and things like that um, to teaming up with the Hill the Hood Foundation to be able to do that on a bigger level and now we're trying to be able to do it on a huge 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 level um, so um, you know we you know with the with the Hero Empowerment Center if you guys haven't heard about it the Hero Empowerment Center is going to be this in Memphis it's going to be this big artistic um, center um, and centered around being able to bring up the youth and being able to bring up kids um, in entertainment, in comic books, in um, movies, and in music. Providing um, them creative outlets. Providing them big time creative outlet that has been taken away from, it's been stripped from them for years now. So we're trying to be able to infuse that back into the inner city um, and be able to invest back into our kids. So. Um, that that is going to be huge, and you know, my productions, our studio is going to be based there. So um, we're going to be bringing back comic studio. We're going to be bringing back uh, um, manga classes um, and writing classes, uh, graphic design classes, and stuff out of there. And then we're also going to be doing our comic books out of there, doing Shinobi Ninja Princess out of there as well. So um, you got to be able to look forward to that. You know, that's something big. That's something huge and even that I don't think that I would be able to the, the person I was back then would not be able to invest in something like that you know um, the, 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 the mindset just wasn't there for that so it's affected me a lot just having a family that's it Woo.